nagtawag si Yuwo nung supposedly uh, one-on-one meeting with Yuga eh he has a proposal his, his proposal was to unify Rush Duels and Goha Duels eh much to the surprise of Team 7 pumayag agad si Yuga pero before <laughs> Before Yumo could implement it right away, sinabi ni Dal yung kanyang yung kanyang uh, servant na droid uh, that looks like that looks like a Darth Vader helmet, okay? Hindi na raw pwede. Kasi may mga nauna na mga formats na ininstall sa system ng Goha. Eh inamin ni Yuga na siya ang may kagagawan ng lahat ng to. Because he sort of um, he sort of made uh, another Rush Duel program na open source naman at ipinag ipinagkalat at ikinalat niya ito sa lahat ng users ng uh, ng system ng Goa sa dueling systems nila so it's an or it's uh, enabling them to create their own dueling formats now. Uh, he wants to fire Yuga. Well, again, Yuga said it's okay. Pero, uh, kilontra siya kagad ng mga ibang President siblings. Well, if you want, basically, sinabi nila Yuro kila ki Yuwo na, if you want to fire, uh, something to this effect, if you want to fire at least a middle-level executive of the company, it has to be a mutual decision between all five of us. It's got a point. Lima silang President Sibling eh. So, walang walang nagawa si Yuwo. Pero, eh, ano yun, sinabi naman din ni Yuga na, well, it's okay to fire me. On one condition. Gusto kong malaman kung ano yung forbidden card na yun. Basically, walang kaidi idea ang lahat ng President Siblings tungkol, tungkol sa sinasabi ni Yuga. And now, what? Well, I-explain ni Yuga kung bakit. Sige. But, tumulong na yung... Silang, silang limang... Lahat ng President Siblings, tumulong na rin. Okay, sige. Ngayon, merong... Meron silang nalaman na... Remember the... Um, uh, remember the underground... Uh, incident na... Na-involve sila Luke at si... Sila Luke, yung journalism club at ni... Um, ni Hunt. But na detect ng security system ng Goha yon. So nakita ni ni Yuran. Oy, ano to? May underground activity sa un- underground laboratory. Nagsabi lang ni si Luke na nandoon sila nung isang araw. So baba sila ng lahat doon. And to look surprise, para wala nang nangyari. So eh, na curious din yung limang president siblings. Sinabi ni Yuran sa inutos yung kanyang yung kanyang droid. Paki, um, paki-reconstruct yung sila sa aming forbidden card. So, gano'n, you know, you know, kinalikot. Lumabas yung card. And the card was Monster Reborn. Um, while they were pondering on this, bigla nakawala si Swirly kay Luke. Kinuha yung, and all of a sudden, may kinuha siyang itim na dueling disc dun sa, dun kay Dahl. Tinanggap ni, Yu, tinanggap ni Yuga yung yung challenge pero sabi ni Yuwo teka muna Yuga I'll get I'll handle this duel so the duel is on between Yuwo and Sorli unwittingly he awakens the re- um Sorli's real uh, identity ni reveal na ni Sorli kung sino siya talaga he is the real Koha Yuga this was their this is actually one of their one of their siblings, si Yuga Goha. The most oppressive of them all. Lahat papatulan, maka, may makakaduelo lang. And he enjoys torturing his opponents. He eventually um, kicks Yuo's ass. So, talo. And, well, final scene. He, he flees Goha HQ to meet up with the Duel Insects Club. 
Ito pala talaga ang pakay ng Duel in Six Club to resurrect him. So they all bowed to what? We can now say the actual big bad of season two. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. Well, natural. The pace picked up during the duel scene, and it was ah, I don't know, because ito yung naramdaman ko nung natalo si Yue. It was really tough to watch. It just goes, well, the pacing showed us all how evil this Goha sibling is. He was so evil, even, uh, even you, even, even you colluded with his other, his other siblings to, well, just to stop him. The pacing of this episode was, well, at first was slow, and um, it's going through a discovery phase, parang ganon kasi um, uh, everybody in the episode wants to know what this forbidden card is. So, kailangan medyo bagana mo pacing para yung build up to the to the actual discovery of the forbidden card eh ma-realize ng viewer. It became excruciating nung uh, nung Lumabas na si Yuga Goha. Flow naman. First gear shift here was actually um, the specific sequence where Yuga, Yuga Odo, okay, para may distinguish natin, kasi dalawa na silang Yuga ngayon, tandaan niyo mga kamaistal, Patreon, already accepted his termination, pero on one condition. Yun nga, gusto niya malaman kung ano yung forbidden card na to. Why did I call it a gear shift? Simple lang. It triggered the discovery phase of this episode. Second gear shift was when Swirly announced that um, Swirly isn't here anymore. Sinabi niya yun. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift? Well, flat out, sinabi na ni Swirly that Swirly is not his real name. He only got that name the moment he was sealed. It's quite a character development gear shift for Swirly. And uh, it's one for the worst. Final gear shift was when, well, um, for man lang nagpaalam si, uh, si Yuga Goha kay Luke. Kasi, well, I don't know. Kasi Luke still, well, Luke still called uh, Yuga Goha Swirly. But oh, like, like he said during the duel with you, the duel against you, Swirly isn't here anymore. So why did I call it a gear shift? Well, of course, eh, the real big bad of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 Season 2 has finally arrived. You think it's you? Ah, ah. I don't think you can match this Goha Sim. Um, this guy's ruthlessness. Kaya, these three, three, three gear shifts that I saw, um, the last two will play a role down the line in season two. Plot-wise, my, my recollection sequence, pero, saglit lang eh. Malinis ang plot. Kasi, like I've said in uh, uh, in any review that has a that has a recollection sequences, most of these kinds of scenes are are negligible. Pwede mong baliwalain muna. All you have to do is listen to to the dialogue. Yun lang gawin yun eh. Then it's a uh, and you're still in the main continuity of the episode. If the plot weren't this clean, hindi hindi ganon siguro ka kalaki ang impact ng ng uh, ng ng pagkaka introduce sa bagong uh, sa bagong main villain ng ng Yu-Gi-Oh series na to. Hindi ganon hindi ane. Hindi mo mararamdaman as the viewer. So, 
plot was clean. So paste, flow, and plot. I always didn't distinguish the um, the pacing from the from the flow. Halos ano eh? Um, they they depended they de they were dependent on each other, but I had to I had to discern I had to discern it with surgical precision, so to speak. Parang ganon yun eh. So Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens Episode Seventy Seven. Wow, Seven Seven is oh oh ano? Triple Seven. Two thumbs up. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to change the filter now. Para, well, I'm going to show you something, guys, that'll um, that'll probably knock your socks off as an anime fan. Yan. Para maniwana. Excuse me. Okay. This episode, uh, the way I see it, is actually a um. Uh, a celebration of probably the second most iconic card in both the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and the card game. Monster Reborn. Okay. The iconic card art. Kasi merong alternate um alternate card art to eh, that they had to make para ma-penetrate nila ang US market. But this, this, this is the one that's iconic. Yan. The one that has the, the one that has the Ankh, the Egyptian cross, as, a, as part of the card art. You can consider this entire episode a fan service moment because of this card. Yan. Because of Monster Reborn. This one. Laki tuwa ko. Uy! Monster Reborn! <laughs> Grabe! The fan service just keeps pouring in with, with this particular Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Kaya, you can... You know, this, uh, this episode featuring Monster Reborn for half the episode, you can therefore conclude that Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 is one of the best fan service animes out there. Probably the best since Gintama. Kaya, up to now, I'm still watching it, not just as a, as a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, but also a player. I really enjoyed watching this episode because um, the second most iconic card in both the um, in both the anime and the game, in the actual card game, uh, was featured for almost the entire episode. So, <laughs> so again. Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 77. Two thumbs up. Another span service. Two thumbs up. Mahalai style. Yay! Monster Reborn. So what do we do now, Mahalai style? Patreon. Of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Mukhang maganda yung teaser, pero... Uh, I don't trust teasers, actually. But the way it looks... Looks like we're uh, looks like we're up for another um another exciting duel next week. Maya, kapana panabik uli ang Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens. Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those who are still exclusive to the ARD, it's okay, no rush. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest instead. I'm gonna make this rundown probably the shortest rundown you'll ever see from me because um, Kyohei has been framed uh, for uh, well, uh, the chairman of Japan safety Bodan's grandfather just got shot so ang um, nakita ano uh, ang nakita doon si Kyohei and instantly um, director Toriyomi yung second in command ng Lolo Botan instantly accuses him of uh, 
of shooting the chairman. So, ayun, nagtago si nagtago muna si Kyohei. Then puts then uh, uh puts Ryunosuke and Kuruma under arrest. Si Bota naman under house arrest naman kasi minor. They can't just arrest her. So, well, uh, Botan eventually escaped house arrest. Ayun, tinulungan niya sila, Kuruma and Ryunosuke. But, uh, so, eventually, nagpaiwan si Ryunosuke. So, so ang pumunta lang, ang pumunta lang to Kyohei's aid were Botan and Kuruma. So, nag- nagkwento na si Kyohei kung ano talaga yung nangyari. Uh, he just found the chairman in a uh, uh, yeah shot in shot in the chest. Siyempre, walang walang buhay pero may pulse may pulso. Then when Toriumi um uh, sinit nung sinita siya ni Toriumi, so well, in a panic uh, nag uh, nagtatakbo siya. Then all of a sudden, Ryanosuke radios them na that HQ is under attack. Ganito, ganito, ganito. Then, all of a sudden, uh, nung tinanong ni Bota na kumusta yung shard, pak! The line went dead. Nagkahinala na si Bota that um, and her suspicion was correct. Ryanosuke is the mole now in Japan safety. Yes, folks. Ryanosuke is also una kasita. He ran. Well, pinakita na lang that he ran off with the shard. And of course, uh, nung chinek nila yung uh, status ni ng Lord Libotan, ayon kinuwento na ng kinuwento na ng chairman kung ano talaga ang nangyari. He was shot by Ryunosuke. Final scene. Oh, pinakita na lang si oh, Ryunosuke was on a plane. Uh, of course, with, with the shard with him, shard number eight, John. Uh, he was all, he was looking at a picture that had uh, bizarrely the same photo Elmo had, pero kasama siya sa photo na to. And all this time, I thought he was the good guy. Fuck. So let's break this episode down ARD style. Hindi ko patatagalin ang review na to mga ka-lifestyle because ganong katindi na ang twist sa anime na to. We're, in, we're on the road to the finale. Mind you. Pace. It became slow and excruciating nung binalita ni Toriumi na nabari lang chairman. That was that from there on end it was a slow and excruciating pace then uh nakadagdag pa yung na nalaman ng buong ng nalaman ng team na si Rionoski pala ang mole ng unang asita wow if it isn't uh if the if that kind of a pacing isn't excruciating to you well I hate to say it, but you're a normie. You are the normie when it comes to anime. Flow the man. Well, first gear shift here was when uh, they finally found a way to get to Kyohei. You know, because I remember si uh, si Botan na sinabi ni Kyohei no, na about the red button in his vehicle. Pipinto din nang tapat yung kung talagang emergency na. Well. Well, this is an emergency because uh, Kyohei is nowhere to be found. So, Botan pressed that red button and sinabi lang niya, take us to where the chief is. Nag-auto-drive. Uh, the van instantly, the minivan went, instantly went on auto-drive mode. Dere-derecho siya. Hanggang sa mapunta sila dito sa parang cottage. Ayun nga. Hideout pala ni, Ryu, ni Kyohei yun. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, it just goes to show you that um, in times of crisis, you need to remember everything that has happened um, at least within the past two months. Because you can never tell 
kung kung kakailanganin mo yung information na yun. Um, in short, information is gold. Kasi kung hindi sineryoso ni Botan yung sinabi ni Kyoke that day, baka hindi nil, baka na-overlook nila ang ang detalyeng ito sa minivan which has served as their their mobile base of operations every time they they go out looking for a shard so yep it's an all important gear shift final gear shift was was when they realized that um yun nakita nila uh dala dala nila si, si director Toyomi they went back to HQ ayun wala na si Ryunosuke and all the guards are down the vault is open the shard is gone I would be an idiot if I did not call this one a gear shift well the plot twists um, they're getting uh, they're getting more unexpected by the episode yun ang narealize ko sa gear shift na to so these two gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role in the final three episodes of this anime. Mark my words. Plot lies. Malinis. Although there were um, there were recollection scenes courtesy of Kyohei and the chairman. They're just that recollection scenes. Kumaga. They're not exactly a backstory. Pero, they are vital to telling the entire plot of the episode. Ganong ka-valuable ang mga, ang mga recollections na to. You can either discount them from the main continuity of the episode, or you can. Depende na sa'yo as the viewer. Kaya, yeah, malinis ang plot. Napakalinis. Talagang, it's uh, it's the kind of plot that's typical of a spy thriller. And damn, this uh, this is probably the biggest twist of the anime right now. Yung pagkakatwider sa kanila ni Rinosuke. So, well, if you ask me, there's hell to pay on the part of Japan safety. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Wow. Why, Ryunosuke? Why? So, Tesla Note Episode 10. Hope you heard that. The latter three parts of the episode, it was uh, it was rather tough to watch. Lalo nung nung bandang final scene na, ayon nung nilaglag sila ni Rinosuke. Grabe. Um, talk about a burn notice. You remember? You guys remember that show? Yeah, parang ganito yon, laglagan. And well. If there's anything this episode will tell you, it's this. Una Kasita is now this desperate in in gathering all the shards. Dahil, tigisan eh, ang CIA at ang Japan safety. So, well, if I were both Japan safety and the CIA, I would go, I would really go after Una Kasita now. Forget about the shards. It's Una Kasita you should be taking down first. Sila, sila ang talagang kontrabida rito eh. And yung mga galamay nila, they are, they, they've proven again that they're all over the place. It's about time someone takes them down. Will they do that in the final three episodes? Forty sixty. So again, Tesla Note episode 10 deserves another mic drop.
visuals may suck, but hey, the storyline is what matters. Fucking good. We'll just have to do the drill now. We will wait for next week and watch episode 11. Natin ko na magiging, uh, magiging aftermath nito. Or yung repercussions ng ginawa ni Rienosuke. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still exclusive to the ARD, chill. Enjoy the reviews and enjoy the other reviews on this digest. Another three zany stories. First story was a um, uh, summer festival scene wherein. Grabe. Uh, undercover si Hinaichi and Jalok and Ronaldo are well are their fun selves as a summer festival guy it eventually turns out that um, half the half the stall owners in this particular festival are vampires so nagkainitan ang mga, ang mga vampire at mga ordinary citizens and um, then the vampire empress shows up and uh, nakiusap na well can't we just get along because it is the summer festival all the vampires in the area consider her the empress so okay, sabi nila we'll do the empress's bidding so everyone has gotten along then a dream sequence by Hinaichi suddenly comes along and parang she got drifted into this um this nothingness then someone saves her and um then all of a sudden she snaps out of it and realizes that there's a clue as to some as to the the person who saved her from that nothingness it's Dralok actually let's break this down ARD style base cut to the chase no complaints about the pacing kasi well the aim of this anime is to make you laugh so it's not a tense pacing pero it's fast enough to make you laugh all three stories really made really made me laugh grabe <laughs> well flow naman the biggest gear shift I saw here was during the first story no, uh, when Hinaichi spaced out, then she encounters this weird, uh, weird uh, uh, footpath leading to a temple. Then some white figure is is uh, is tempting her to 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 come closer. Then a black figure. Uh, blocks the white figure's way and um, and uh, takes Hinaichi by the hand and uh, basically saving her from this potential potential evil right why did I call it a gearship? kasi nakalata ni Hinaichi kung sino yung sumalba sa kanya it was Jalok because Jalok was missing a shoe well if there's any if there's anything this gearship is personally telling me, it's this. Dralo cares about Hinaichi. He said it before. He really wants to um he really wants to taste Hinaichi's virgin blood. Probably that's part of his uh it's part of his style in uh in getting Hinaichi to agree to him to para matikman yung tugo niya. But it also makes you wonder. Sino ba tong white figure na to na na umiingganyo kay Hinaichi na to come closer? Halatang ane, eh, halatang may evil intention. If you've seen the episode already, that's why I call it the gear ship. This gear, this one and only gear ship I saw in this episode may play a role down the line in, well, in the last for sure in the last two episodes of this anime uh, I could really feel it in my body like, um, 
やのやのやのうんこもめじょめじょなんいぎらぶちょばらっこ Maybe this will、um, maybe this、uh, this comedy anime will take a horror turn anytime during the last two episodes、uh, yeah, I can really feel it right now plot wise planchado cause it's a multi story episode you can't call it a clean plot cause it's three different stories so in order in order to compensate you have to uh You have to put in transitions that will smoothly、uh, move the viewer from one story to another. I saw that during the second,、uh, the transition between the second and third stories. It's really evident right there. The timeline between the second and third stories, parang ano lang eh, parang one day apart lang. It really felt like one. One day apart lang yung dalawang to, so you could, well, I can personally say that the plot of this episode was well ironed out. Talagang inorganized ng madhouse ng maigi, kasi yung first story, ah,、uh, I can say it's a standalone story, kasi parang may ano siya, I could really feel it. Right now, in my skin, that this will have implications in the final two episodes. Trust me, manga lifestyle Patreon. When I say that, so base flow and plot, they all came together for this episode. So the vampire dies in no time. Episode ten. If I don't give this the two thumbs up, because it made me laugh and it made me feel weird at the same time.、Uh, I'm talking about the first story, because, parang ano tay, parang come before the storm. Yun yung feeling ko right now for this、uh, for this first story.、Uh, the, the second and third story is talagang talagang laugh trip, <laughs> laugh trip sa talaga. But、um, for the first story, talagang I felt,、uh, yeah, there there were funny moments, but、um, half the time, at least, I really felt that weird that weirdness, especially that sequence where kabang nag space out si Hinaichi and he, she encountered this white figure, then this、uh, the, this black figure、uh, dragged her out of it. Really makes you think. Araba na lang ang idralok dito. Hmm. But I, I don't want to suspect idralok of anything bad. Because, uh, uh, despite being a vampire, he he's a gent, he's a good-hearted gentleman. Right. Eh, wag nito naman siguro intention yaki hinaiji. But hey. This episode is motivation enough for me to, yeah, to really、um, wait for the final two episodes of this anime on how,、uh, on what、uh, specific story it's going to focus on. You feel me, mga lifestyle Patreon? So again, the vampire dies in no time, episode ten. What are we gonna do now? Of course, the drill. We will wait for next week and watch episode eleven. Yung kumero story don na na magkakaroon ng connection sa first story ng episode nito. I really wanna know. Patreon, wait for my next upload. And if you're still,、uh, if if most of you are still exclusive to the ARD, chill lang. Di mo di ko lang mo kaya pinagmamatale. In the meantime. 
Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. It's the second time that, um, uh, right, probably the third time already, that uh, it started out with Vera making her courtesy call to the, uh, to the, what you call this? To the, to that, to the, to the main committee. Yung tatlo. As usual, the, the military man goes blame mode on her. Eh, pero sinabi naman ni Vera na, we still have, we have three chances to, to, to take out uh, LC. We've already wasted two. So there's one more left. Eh, what? Sort of agree naman yung dalawa. Everyone comes out, um, uh, uh, on each other's good side, she walks out of there. Well, with the with, with the main com with that committee, uh, pretty much satisfied again. I think one day, in approach siya ni Sigure, yung pala, uh, ini invite siyang uh, maki makisalo sa kanila sa kanilang barbecue party well, ng, ng team. To my personal surprise, Vera said yes. Okay. She too was shocked at what, at what she does, what she just did. From then on onwards, she uh, she kept on pondering, kung bakit uh, kung bakit siya ininvite ni Shigure. Um, why does the uh, why does the rest of her platoon want to want to socialize with her on this? Then. Um, she realized one thing. It's it's okay to keep your distance with um, to keep your distance from from your immediate subordinates, but not all the time. And eventually, tinanggap niya yung invitation ng ng uh, ng ng team. Ayon, sumipot siya. Final scene. The day after. Tinawag niya si Shigure sa, sa, sa office niya. Then, uh, she breaks probably the most shocking news of all uh, in this entire anime. She's going to remove Shigure from the platoon. Alok ba naman, nagigets mo na, Vera? <laughs> in order for us to understand what went on in this episode, we're going to break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. Nearly all throughout the episode, it had a um, slow but understandable pacing. Except for the um, yung mga, yung mga recollection sequences dito si Vera. But they're totally negligible. Silver Link made, uh, made the proper call on this episode because I think their true aim here was to, was to publicly deconstruct Vera's mentality. Vera's overall mindset. And, well, uh, right now, I have a pretty good idea of how she thinks and how she, um, how she does business, basically. Kung binilisan nila ang pacing nito kahit konti, tingin ko, mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't totally get the point of this entire episode. Kasi, you are, um, you are deconstructing the psyche of a major character here, yeah, si Vera. And she's quite an enigma in this anime. Flo naman! Well, first gear shift here was when Shigure invited Vera over to that barbecue party. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift. This gear shift will show you how 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 much effort Shiguri puts in in uh, keeping Leslie's legacy alive. Kasi, uh, ito yung talagang ginagawa nila nung buhay siya. Ngayari, uh, a successful mission, ba, eh, party tayo, kahit mag bar, kahit mag, uh, kahit mag, kahit mag, 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 ihaw, ihaw na lang tayo. Eh, let's just celebrate. At, well, all of us, all of us uh, came back alive. It was a successful mission. Sige. Barbecue tayo. So, 
He's trying to keep that legacy alive, pero which is uh, which is a good one, which is a good legacy. And this is something Vera could not understand. Second gear shift was when she finally um, accepted the invitation. That scene. Because, well, napaniwala tayo eh. Akala naman, akala naman natin na uh, she needs to do this because number one, to keep uh, to keep her closest confidence legacy alive. And number two, she doesn't need to be a stiff all the time. Kailangan din niya mag, kailangan din niya makipag, uh, makipagsosyalan sa kanyang mga tauhan. In order for them to to become an effective team, whether uh, whether inside the asylum or outside, at least that's what uh, that's what Leslie wants. Uh, that's what Leslie probably wants. Final gear shift is of course the final scene. Bakit? Napaniwala mo kami Vera? Akala mo akala naman namin na intindihan mo na? Well, why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang. <laughs> After all the soul searching, and she, when well, we all thought that she, she finally understood what, um, on how, uh, Leslie's leadership works. Here she is, trying to, um, well, trying to remove, uh, her her platoon's resident sniper. Trying to take him off the team. It's a gear shift that will make you think. Kaya nga gear shift eh. <laughs> so these three gear shifts that I saw will play a role down the line in the final three episodes of this anime. All of them. Plot-wise. The recollection sequence says all of them were split seconds each. Eh. Kumbaga, pok, 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 pok. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. Because, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to pull out an episode that will basically deconstruct the psyche of a major character, but hey, you gotta have a really clean plot to to somehow make the viewer understand that you are doing this. That na isinasambulat mo ang ang buong uh, ang kaisipan ng character na to. There is um, putting in a definite backstory or side story in this kind of an episode. Nope. That's out of the question. <laughs> That's out of the question. Kaya the plot was clean enough to make us um, either either understand or ponder what um, what Vera's mind is going through on a regular basis. So pace, flow, and plot—they all came together for this episode. So, Deep Insanity: The Lost Child, Episode Nine. Ina ko pa pa tupik tupik pa. Hmm. Two thumbs up. We all know that this anime started out um, rather late. Two weeks late to be exact. So, talagang hindi niya naumpisahan ang fall anime season ng, ng ganong kaaga. Hindi siya sumabay sa iba. So, the way I figured this, the next episode actually will be will probably be a, um, a recap episode. Because based on the title alone, huh? I'm just basing it on the title, dun sa teaser. If this episode is meant to be a um, a setup for the final three episodes, whoa, uh, we better be prepared, mga ka lifestyle Patreon. We're up for a very intriguing final three episodes. Kaya, uh, I don't know about you, but ang abang ako talaga rito is episode ten. Not the recap episode. <laughs> who, who wants to watch a recap episode? So again, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 9. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up.
what's up for this great anime mama lifestyle. Wow, Evangelion's way of deconstructing a major character psyche is here in this anime. So what are we gonna do now? Simple lang, the drill. We wait for next week. Well, if you wanna wait for next week, ako, I'm going to wait for uh, the next legitimate episode, which is episode 10. So, bahala kayo. If you want to watch the recap episode, if you want to watch the recap, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not reviewing it. <laughs> Definitely. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. For the rest of you who are still exclusive to the ARD, looks lang. Take it easy, okay? I'm not rushing you to subscribe. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest in the meantime. Slowly but surely, Jolene is um, uh, getting the hang of, uh, uh, of Green Dolphin State Prison. She has learned a, a new skill here. Yeah, of course, through her stand. Profiteering. She got even. At kumita pa siya. <laughs> Pero no! Bisita raw para sa kanya, sabi ng isang guardia. And... It turns out to be her father. Yup! The great Jotaro Kujo himself! The man who killed Dio. <laughs> and now he's here to give her the heads up on who actually framed her. Hindi no si Romeo. Kundi isang tao sa na sa natumutong sa pangalang Jongali A. This Jongali A fellow is a former henchman of Dio! You get the... You see the connections now, mga ka-lifestyle Patreon? If that ain't dangerous to you, I don't know what is. Final scene. What? He makes his presence known by shooting both Jotaro and... and the guard that was, uh... uh that was personally, uh, That was personally handling Jolin throughout this conversation. Siyempre, patay yung guardia. Tama ka pa naman sa ulo, eh. Let's just break this down ARD style so that we can so that we can have a a real deep dive into this episode. Pace. Hindi naman bumikap yung pace nung ano eh nung sa sa eksena niyon where she where she poisoned all the all the cops in that library na na ini na pinag-iinuman ng mga uh, na na mga na mga loko na, na mga lokang inmate na nagbabasa doon and of course yung yung may utang sa kanya. But, the poison is specifically silver. <laughs> and silver is poison to the body. So, ayun, nagtae. <laughs> the pace picked up nung... But, obviously, nagpagalaw na ng kanyang stand si Jongali. And, but, of course, ang una nakahalata, si Jotaro. What does the pacing tell you? Simple lang. Halatang halata na si Julie ng target dito. But it would be a uh, it would be a bonus for Jongali if he takes if he even takes out the father, the man who killed his master. Bottom line, if you're a Joe Star, you have this large bullseye on your back. So kung sino mang tauhan ni Dio ang buhay pa, ikaw ang pupuntirihin talaga. That's what the pacing will basically tell you. Flow naman. The well, first gear shift here was, of course, that um, that poisoning scene. <laughs> so, uh, what does this gear shift tell you? Very basic. Jolene is slowly mastering her, uh, her stance ability. And, and, he sh and she is getting more creative by the day. Excuse me. Not only... She got her money back. She then exed it. <laughs> Kumita pa siya ng $9. Mm. That's profiteering. <laughs> it was a truly satisfying gear shift. And it also tells the viewer how how uh, how proficient Jolene is now as a stand user. Second gear shift was when Jotaro was able to to see her daughter after 
after getting incarcerated. Why did I call this a gear shift? Fan service moment! One of the most iconic characters in the JoJo storyline has finally made an appearance in Stone Ocean. I would be a dumbass if I don't call this a gear shift. <laughs> Fan service moment ito eh. And it um it just tells you how uh, despite his um talagang parako dating talagang astig eh. Astig dating talaga ni Jotaro eh. Despite him being a despite have him having a tough guy image, he's still a father. He's still concerned about the welfare of his daughter. Ganun lang yan eh. So it's both a fan service and a um, empowering gear shift. Parang ganyan. Final gear shift was of course the final scene. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, it just goes to show you how much of a father Jotaro is. Number one. Number two. It also shows you how dangerous a stand user they're up against. Si Jongali. Episode 3 pa lang complicated na storyline. <laughs> So, these three gear shifts that I saw, all of them will play a role down the line in this uh, in this, uh, in this particular JoJo series. Can't wait on how it's going to, uh, how it's all going to play out. Plot-wise, Malinis! Here's what's um, fascinating about the JoJo storyline. Hindi siya nagba-back story at bihira siyang mag-side story. Nagsa-side story lang siya kung kinakailangan. It uh, oh, well, most especially if they're if they're going to transition from one part to the other. They have done this during uh during season 1, parts 1 and 2. Ang ganda ng transition. Pero dito, nope. You have to Build the suspense up. You have to build the um the notoriety of the main villain. They've done it here in this episode. You really need a clean plot to pull this one off. Aya. Oh, that's why I'm a JoJo fan. <laughs> Maganda yung build up towards the in towards the introduction of the villain. They've done it with Dio twice. They've done it to Diavolo in Golden Wind. They've done it to Kira in Diamond is Unbreakable. Yeah. The clean plot is typical JoJo. I wasn't surprised. So pace, flow, and plot. We all came together for this episode. Talagang JoJo JoJo ang episode na to. <laughs> so. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 3. You know, it's pa. Oh. Two thumbs up. Um, Patreon, napakaswerte nyo because um, I'm all pumped up to to review Episode 4 right now. And for those of you who are still exclusive to the ARD, well, ano pa hinihintay nyo? You go over to Patreon and wait for my review of the next episode. Kaya, pero, take up, bottom line, what do we expect of episode 4? More action. And what's going to happen to Jotaro? Nabaril siya eh. Tumagos nga yung bala sa kanya eh. And kahit tumagos sa kanya yung bala, hindi na, hindi na wala yung velocity. Tinamaan pa rin sa ulo yung gwardiya. Ganun, ganun ka, kumbaga, ganun ka high quality yung ginamit na bala. Halatang sniper ang ang tumira. Not only and not only this is no ordinary sniper. It's also a stand user. <laughs> Kumbaga, like like I said a while ago, fina para mong fina times yung yung skill ni Mista. Because we all know how uh, how Mista stand works. Kahit sa man yung kahit sa man yung uh, ituro yung baril niya. Paglapas ang bala nyo, i-guide lang ng stand nyo. <laughs> Kaya kung ikaw talagang target ng, ng balang ito, wala kang takas. <laughs> Tumba ka sigurado. So, yeah, that, that's what we should expect from from the next episode. So, well, 
you should also expect from the next episode that the, the storyline will get more complicated than this. So again, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 3. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime franchise. Mama, next time. Jotaro. Jotaro. So what do we do? Of course, the drill. We wait for next... Yep. If you're on Patreon, well... Wait for my next, uh, wait for my review of the next episode. If you're, what? If you're still exclusive to the ARD, you'll just have to wait for next week for episode, uh, five. Kasi episode three to eh. Ganun, ganun eh, di ba? Odd sa ARD, even sa Patreon. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Classing episode to. But anyway, let's put it down. So, bottom line, ang episode na to ay uh, tungkol sa first day ni Nina Lu at ni Dia. So, they uh, they went out for some lasagna. They even uh, they even helped a kid find their find uh, find his mother kasi nawawala eh. <laughs> Naging lost in town section sila bigla. When uh, Lu said his goodbyes, ayun. Yung palang mga yung palang mga ordinary townspeople na, na nadaanin nila all throughout their day, mga sundalo pala ng, ng Viconi ito. Uh, mga sundalo ng tatay niya. So, on, by her own command, nagtanggalan silang lahat ng disguise. Ayun, they're, they're, they're back to being soldiers. So, we can now assume that Dia is part of the civil war uh, her kingdom is in. Uh, he's, she's playing an active role, pero hindi di yata alam ni Lu. Final scene. Um, it's actually a post-credit. Tinawag ni, tinawag ni Tart si Lu. Kasi pinapatawag ng tatay. Merong ginagamot na parang sundalo ang tatay niya. And this soldier had uh, was on orders to deliver a message to the house of Tata Day. Kung baga, uh, kinukomisyon sila para mer- merong, well, basically, may pinatutumpa sa kanila. And sinabi ng, ng tatay ni Lou. And he said, Lou, we're being, we're being, uh, uh, we're being hard to do a job. You need to, ki- the target is Dia. It's a shocking twist, I know. Because it's the final three episodes of this anime. So, hindi ko patatagan nito, to, mga, mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. Well, need I um, expound on the details as to the pacing of this episode? Pumikap lang yung pace nung final scene na. First three parts of the episode, slow pace kasi first day. A typical, uh, it's the tip, it's the um, pacing that you would find in a typical romance anime. <laughs> but, re- but let me remind you, mga kalaysa, Patreon, this is not a romance anime, okay? This is a, um, this is an isekai anime. Yung pacing, hindi ka, ano eh, it won't make you bored as hell. Kasi, um, who never thought that it might be their last date? They would be finding themselves on opposite sides of a war later on. Pero what this, uh, what the pacing will make you realize is this: it's the final three episodes of the anime. So you're important, don. Naga, I had those, um, I had those road to the finale feels uh, very strongly in this uh, in this episode because of the pacing. Flow, naman. First gear shift here was when, um, well, probably the most profound gear shift of this episode. Yung, um, meron sila na dat ng batang umiiyak, eh, naligaw pala, nahiwalay sa nanay niya. So, well, that's when they, that's when they decided to help the kid. Bakit ko tinawag the gear shift? But, it just goes to show you uh, that even... That even, that even well, despite being a cold-blooded killer, 
si Lu may puso. This is what this is what makes him the main protag. May discretion. May discretion sa kay papano. At dito na tuwa si Dia. So, let's just say na dito dito na pamahal si Dia lalo. Let's say that. Kaya ko tinawag na gear shift ito. Now, final gear shift. Dalawa lang yun. Was also, was of course the final scene. Why did I call this a gear shift? What? No brainer mga ka lifestyle. Dito na siguro iikot ang final two episodes ng anime. So, it's a far um, kumaga, if you would go back to the pilot, yung opening scene ng pilot, ang layo niya eh. So, saan, so, sa anong paraan tayo babalik sa opening scene ng pilot? Eh, yun ang, yun ang lumalarong sa isip ko. But bottom line, it, uh, this gear ship has particularly set us up for probably um, a tough to watch final two episodes. Because, inassign na si Lu na patayin ng kanyang girlfriend. <laughs> Pinatutubas sa kanya mismo na tatay niya. So, uh, what, what a way to complicate the storyline. Okay? What a way to compli complicate the storyline through this gear ship. So, these two gear ships that I saw, the last one, will play a role in the final two episodes. Baka dito nga umikot ang final two episodes sa gear ship na to. So, if I were you guys, I would um, I would uh, I would watch this anime right now and go back at least three episodes from episode 10 para lalo yung mag-gets kung saan kung paano para na tumakbo ang anime na to. Plot wise. Um, malinis. Bakit? Kasi it um the pacing of the episode basically went slow. First three parts of the episode. Tapos biglang final scene. Mm. Um, the the head of the house of Trata Day just dropped a bomb on Lou. What happens now to the dynamic between them? This is what the plot will make you understand. Kung hindi ganito kalinis ang plot ng episode na to, we would not instantly um understand the implications of what just happened in episode 10 particularly the final scene so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode oh i don't want to say your lifestyle patreon but i will watch the final two episodes gusto ko talagang makita rito kung paano ihahandle ni lu ito so ang sasok isoko episode 10 Ano lang yung aking ano, ha? Yeah. Hmm. Two thousand! Nasabi ko na on what to expect uh, with the final two episodes. I don't need to this... I don't need to talk about it further, mga kalahis time. All, you have to, all we have to do now is wait for episode 11. So again... Ang Satsu Kisoku, episode 10? So mga kalaysa, we'll just have to do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. I love it when the, when the storyline gets complicated like this. I'm <laughs> excited now. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. For those of you who are still exclusive to the ARD, okay lang kung muna. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Another four stories. First two stories of this episode, magadikit. It's all about yung well, the usual thing we um well, we encounter as high schoolers, sports fest. Um, they are they were com they competed for Komi's sake. Well, kumbaga, well, uh, Komi is the class goddess. So 
lahat ng cheer nila, uh, lahat, may, lahat merong komi. <laughs> yeah, it eventually culminated in, um, in the event wherein um, the winner will be determined kasi mukhang, mukhang nagkatabla-tabla lahat ng, uh, lahat ng year levels eh. So, they resulted through a class relay. Kasale si Komi. So, when the class relay came, sila pala magkatapat. <laughs> One slip from Komi, talagang uh, as in nadula siya. Nung, pag, nung tatapos sila ng ganun sa ikot sa, sa turn na ganun, dun uh, nadula si Komi. Pero sabi ng kanya mga, mga classmates, Komi! 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 So, Na-motivate si Komi. She just picked up the baton. Then starts running like crazy. Until nakita siya tuloy ng, ng sinasabi kong taga, taga lower year na parang rival niya rito. So sila, sila talaga ang naglaban ngayon. All the way to the finish line. But unfortunately, Komi lost too much time from her sleep. Kaya na second place lang yung... yung uh, klase nila Komi. Eventually, well, Komi had fun. Yun na importante. Final story was um, nag-imbita si na Jimmy na pumunta ng arcade at mag, uh, magkuha sila ng mga wacky pictures. Well, um, it's, picture booths are very popular in Japan. Well, kahit dito sa Pilipinas, ang nakakatawa dito, iisa lang yung yung forma ng mukha ni Komi. I- isa lang ang forma. So, paglabas ng picture, yun nga nangyari. Pero, may napansin si Tata Norito dun sa, that, on that particular photo. May sinulit si Komi dun. Thanks for, thanks, um, thank you everyone nakalagay. So, isa lang ibig sabihin kay Tata Norito dun. Komi had a lot of fun today. Let's break this down now, ARD style. Pace. The usual, um, Slowness that is that is now trademark that is now the trademark of this anime. And need I say more? No complaints. Kasi yung uh, yung pacing lalo lalo na sa first two episodes kasi um magkadugtong yun eh, halata eh. Because uh, isa lang yung tema, sports fest. Uh, may kabili sa ng konti kasi especially nung Uh, pinapakita yung mga, yung mga events wherein lumamang yung class nila. Lumamang yung year level nila. Then came uh, the, the class relay kasi medyo uh, naging, naging close fight na. Yung, uh, yung year level nila at yung year level ng, ng girl na nakilala natin doon, eh, parang pantay na eh. So, kumbaga, ito yung pinaka-tiebreaker nila. So, medyo tense yung pacing, lalo-lalo na nung ano, nung natisod si Komi. Yup. The pace picked up like that. Okay. Pero as not to, um, it wasn't to um, totally throw the viewer off. If the pacing were, um, were, were faster than this, hindi Baka itong moment na ito, pagtawanan din natin na hindi dapat. Kasi, it was a um, it was a satisfying moment dahil Komi has again won over another friend. Although, it is from a, although she's from a lower year level. From a lower year level. From another class. So, bonus points yun kay Komi. Um, Flo naman. The biggest gear shift I saw here. The scene where Um, the entire Komi's entire class flock to her just to just to check if she is actually all right. Kasi matinding tiso yung naranasan niya. Imbis na iyakan nila yung pagkatalo, mas mas concern nila ngayon si Komi. <laughs> she ain't the class goddess for nothing. That's what this gearship will make you realize. That is why I that is why for me It's the biggest gear shift of this episode. I consider that a very heavy character development gear shift for Komi herself. It has heavy implications towards the final two episodes. Baka nakakalimutan nyo. 
episode 10 na tayo. So, right after this, mm, final two episodes na. Plot wise. Planchado. It's a multi-story episode. Putting in a clean plot is out of the question kasi makai basically magkakaibang story ito except for the first two kasi magkakabit yan eh. The way they transitioned the, uh, from the second to um, to the third story medyo tawag dito medyo smooth but but uh, the transition between the third and the fourth was uh, was a bit smoother. Am I complaining? No. Just goes to show you how well ironed out this plot is. Kumaga, yung smoothness ng first, yung smooth transition from the first and second stories, parang kineri over nila, parang kinopya nila for uh, the third. Uh, for the second and the third transition. So, this flow and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Call Me Can Communicate, episode 10. Sir. So, thumbs up. Excuse me. Oh. Ito na. Um, I just couldn't believe that um, Comic Can Communicate will uh, it's going to end in two weeks. Pero, kung titignan ninyo ha, kung titignan natin ng maigi itong anime na to, mukhang magkakaroon na season 2 ito eh. Because, well, um, it didn't get much hype when, um, when Fall 2021 started. Mas nakai pa ngayon Jobless Reincarnation Season 2 eh. And um, even yung uh, World's End Harem. Pero na-delay. I think fans um, uh, look to this as an alternative. Pwede. Pero I'm very sure they did, they, uh, this anime did not disappoint them. Kasi eh, yung storyline niya kasi hindi yun eh. Hindi pang ordinaryo eh. It's not an ordinary storyline for a, for a romance comedy anime. There's an underlying uh, disorder that uh, that the main protag needs to tackle with. Episode in, episode out. Sometimes with um with hilarious um consequences. Pero how um how the other characters respond to her disorder is what is what creates the comedy element. It's what it's what creates the comic element. Okay. And of course, her reaction to things. Kasi, hey, ganda niya, prim and proper. Bang, uh, na, mala, uh, mala birhin na kagandahan eh. Then when she, uh, when she, um, when she feels embarrassed, biglang, Biglang GBI's look. <laughs> Grabe. So, I'll be looking forward to not just uh, the next episode, but the final two episodes of this anime. So, dun talaga natin malalaman kung um, if OLM has, um, has another season in store for this anime. So again, Call Me Can Communicate, episode 10. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow. This great romantic, romantic comedy manga lifestyle. Galing. Galing. Call me. Call me. Call me. What's next? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. I just can't wait. Um, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And what? To those uh, who are still exclusive to the ARD, no pressure. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest instead. Wow. Na 35 episodes na pala tayo. Ngayon pa tayo. 
So much has happened in this episode. So, I'm going to, um, I'm going to recap it as much as possible. Horo Horo eventually takes the, um, takes Brocken out with, uh, with the help of, uh, the spirit allies of the Iceman. Brocken looked like a fossil when, when, uh, when Horo Horo was done with him. His primary concern now is how to, uh, how to rush the Iceman to the nearest medical facility. Eh, he was too weak to, uh, to, to even move them around. Until, um, tumulong si Lizard. Because he was, um, he was giving his new spirit ally a, um, a dry run through Lizard's help. Na i... Uh, naitakbo sila horo-horo horo-horo at ang Iceman kung saan uh, kung saan nagbibase ngayon si Yo sa isang uh, abandoned hotel dun sa island Faust tends to horo-horo and the Iceman all of a sudden boom yung uh, uh, the mariachi guy and his team yung may super laking yung may merong super laking oversold na kalansay yup they um they rang the doorbell, so to speak. Muntik na nilang itumba lahat ng, lahat ng sama na nandun. If it weren't for Faust's think, quick thinking, nakataka sila. Pero, nagpaiwan si, si Ryu. So, now we're going to call him just Ryu. Kasi, meron ding Ryu no sa, sa Tesla note. Eh. <laughs> so, it's not to, uh, not, so, it's not to confuse the two. Okay? For our sakes. He was beaten to a bloody pulp. Then, um, all of a sudden, he gets the assist from none other than the Gandara. Yup, nagpakitan, nag, uh, nagparandam na sa wakas ang mga Gandara. Ito namang si Ryu, ipinairal na naman yung kanyang pagiging lolicon. Na-atra kasi medyo maganda yung leader eh. <laughs> Ganun siya katisperado ng ano eh, makakuha ng, makakuha ng, uh, ng isang uh, future bride na katulad ni, ni Ana. Kasi talagang, this is how much he, this is how much, how high he looks up to you. Kahit yung taste ni Yo sa babae, ginagaya na rin niya. So, final scene. Wow! Um, Chocolate suddenly decided to, um, to visit the um, the place where his uh, his former shop buddies are hanging out. Pagdating niya doon, wala, masaker. Nakita na niya, puro bangkay na. Ang mga kaibi, ang mga ang mga kabadi niya dati sa gang, sa gang na 'yon. So, talaga, umiihira nang galit. Sino pa may gawa nito? It's none other than Red Reb and uh Red Reb and his sister. Yung dalawang... Um, tawag dito? Yung dalawang istudyante ni Mickey. Na bata. Now, it turns out that these two siblings... Eh, ito pala yung anak ng lalaking pinatay nung araw ni Chocolau. When he was still... Um, shot stop hitman. May sinabi rin dito si Yo na... Medyo... Familiar sa lahat, especially if you're um, uh, especially if you practice the law of attraction. If you practice universal law like me, you get what you give. I guess um, the past has come to haunt Chocolat. So let's break this down, ARD style. Dami nang yari. It, it was a one episode. Pace, like I said just a few seconds ago. It had a wild pacing. Pero, hindi yung tipong bilis na na mawawala ka eh. This is, this is one of the wildest episodes of the reboot. Sa dami lang nangyari. Excuse me. <laughs> the pacing of this episode was yep. Only one turn to describe it. To describe it. Wild. Yung tipong bilis na ma na it's the type of uh, speed it's the 
type of speedy pacing that will really struck a chord in you. Okay? Especially yung yung attack na ginawa ng mga ito mga grupo ng Alipores ni How. I am absolutely flabbergasted as to the pacing of this episode. Talagang naramdaman kong yung na, naramdaman ko ang wildness ng episode na to. Right? If they slowed the pace down a bit, hindi. Hindi mo, hindi mo ma-feel yung, um, yung speed, ano, yung sense of urgency ni How na itumbal lahat ng ibang competitors. Even, even yo, flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, was when big guy Bill managed to get up at well, it's obvious tutumbahin lang niya sana si Horo Horo rito until nakialam si Lizard in one fell swoop he's probably dead right now why did I call this a gear ship? simple lang mga ka lifestyle Lizard now has a new spirit ally and binrate test niya rito sa gear ship na to Kawawa si Big Guy Bill. It also proves to everyone, every viewer out there of this anime, that, well, Lizard wants to be stronger in order to, um, to, to serve the ex-laws faithfully and at the same time help Yo uh, achieve his cause without... Well, he's doing a balancing act right now. Hey. So he is now toggling between uh, Yo's inner circle and of course the X-Loss. Second gear ship was when Ryu decided to um to, to stay behind in order to um, to buy time for for the rest to uh, for the rest of the inner circle to to make their escape. Buy ko din na gear ship to. Again, simply lang. This goes to show you how much of a team player Ryu is. You gotta admire Ryu for his um for his loyalty to the group. Talagang um he has this gang loyalty. Um he has this gang mentality talaga. Eh. Once you're in a gang, you're in there for life. You know na papansin kung mindset ni ni Ryu rito, which is good for uh, for you in his inner circle. Talagang Trusted um, ally and friend, si Ryu. Final gear ship was, yeah, the final scene. Um, Yo has been saying this all episode long. You get what you give. Sinabi niya ito kay Lizard. Sinabi rin niya ito um, to, to, to the inner circle. Nung nagmi-meeting pa sila, bago dumating sila Lizard at ang Lizard Horohoro at ang Iceman. That gear ship um, is proof that what you said is true. But Chocolove's past has come to haunt him. Ayun na. Yung dalawang batang uh, inulila niya because he killed their father. Sama na rin ngayon. At Estudyante pa ni Miki. He probably doesn't know this. <laughs> it really complicates the storyline. This particular gear shift. Kaya nga gear shift eh. So these three gear shifts that I saw. Um, yeah. More often than not, all of them will play a role down the line in the 17 remaining episodes of the reboot. 52 episodes ang Shaman King reboot. and nyo. Patreon, Maka Lifestyle. So there are 17 episodes left. Plot lies. Um. Wala eh. Wala akong, wala akong nakitang recollection, recollection, recollection sequence, side, side story, or even a back story. Talagang, um, Bridge has had enough because of that five episode back story. So talagang, they were truly focused on uh, giving us a clean plot this time. 
Napakalinis ang plot ng episode na to. Uh, the main continuity of the anime itself was followed here. Hindi ako nawala. Talagang, it kept me glued to my seat in watching it. If an episode has a really clean plot, talagang magliriak ka whether you like it or not. Kung planchado ang plot, hindi pa masyado eh. Wala pa masyadong reaction eh. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 35? Isip pa ako. <laughs> ano ka ba, JG? Oh. Two thumbs up! What happens now to the inner circle? Eh, ngayon, eh, mukhang... Um... Chocolob's past has come to haunt him. Eh, nagkataong... Itong dalawang batang ito, istudyante ni Mickey. At kasama sa team niya. So, how will Mickey handle this situation? Eh si Choco Love, uh, kaalyado ng anak niya. Who has, well, Choco Love is a guy who has, um, I think he's, he's more than ready to, uh, to atone for his, atone for the sins he has committed when he was with Shaq. Kasi marami na yun siya natutunang mabubuting bagay dun sa mentor niya na na shaman. That's, that's how he got his spirit alay eh. Yung si Mick, it's originally his mentor's spirit alay. Nung, nung pinatay ng isang member ng shop ito, lumipat sa kanya. And that's how he, uh, that's how, that's how he got his revenge on, on the man who killed his mentor. Kasi nasa kanya nang Ah, uh, kumbaga, lumipat na sa kanya ang spirit ally nun, si Mick. So up to now, Mick is this uh, spirit ally. Kaya Wala well, well, I hope um Oh, uh, what's call this? I hope everything works out. You're, you're you're the good guys here. Okay? You're uh you both have you you both have connections now with the Asakuras. So hindi kayo dapat mag-away. Kung ano mang, uh, kung ano mang kasalanan ni Chocolove, I guess, uh, I guess he's more than ready to, to, to be accountable for that. To claim accountability. So, well, let's just, let's just wait for the next episode. Kasi dun, dun nagtapos ang episode na to eh. Sus, susuguro na siya ng dalawang bata eh. Kaya, wow. It's gonna be one hell of a fight. So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 35. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for the reboot of the lifestyle Patreon. Oh, I hope Joe Love uh, answers for this crime. Kung hindi, hindi siya ganap na Shaman. What's next for us? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Ako, I'm totally pumped for the next episode kasi... Uh, because of the final scene. Will Chocolove answer for his crimes? Well, I hope so. Because that's what good that's what the good guys do. May kasalanan sila in the past. Kailangan panagutin nila yun. Whether they're on the side of good or not. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. For everybody who still who still watches the ARD, thank you. And don't worry, I'm not gonna pressure you to subscribe, but I am making that recommend. But I am giving you that as a recommendation. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest for a while. So, well, he expressed an ad in your rundown. Mirai uh, found himself, uh, well, uh, Face to face with this, uh, this psycho named, uh, I guess Hajime was, uh, justification enough for Mirai to finally use his white arrow. Quickly, they realized that there's no escape within this, uh, within this mirror house. Talagang kahit sa man sila mapunta, hindi sila makakawala. So, but they're now hoping against hope and they started flying around. 
talagang uh, talagang flying as fast as they can baka sakaling makabutas syempre um, 24 hours have passed and still nothing ngayon uh, while this was happening si Raphael uh, nakita lang niya si Saki na feeling down of, again of course uh, all time low mode pwede rin so eh tinanong niya tapos um, nakamdaman na lang ni Raphael na bigla na lang siyang bigla na lang siyang nagluha so eh napansin ni Saki ang dami ng luha sa paligid niya uh, all of a sudden God shows up eh sinabi niya Revel you did something unprecedented you are the first angel to cry for a human wow so you know what happens when an, when, when an angel does something extraordinary God turns them God ups their rank so first rank na si uh, si Revel ayun nabigyan niya tuloy ng pakpak si Saki and once uh, Saki received her wings they, fl- they fly out na to, uh, to 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 to, to, the, to that amusement park para matulungan sila Mirai at Nana to through the assist from Hajime's angel Bauta na motivate si si Saki na well, mag-isip ng paraan para para matulungan para matulungan yung dalawa okay her suit pala has uh, has a visor that uh, that detects that detects cameras so yun ang ginawa niya so may tatlong camera pala doon na nakapaligid sa mirror house and in the middle and on top of the roof of the mirror house is of course Hajime himself so na-realize kagan ni Saki that um the place she's in right now parang, so, parang water tower is a blind spot for these cameras so hindi na siya nag-atubili tinirahan niya ng red arrow si si Hajime and well who does uh, who does Hajime see, see first after getting shot by that red arrow of course si Saki so, siyempre, toto, toto pa cute si Saki. Ang plano pala niya, ma-attract sa kanya si Hajime enough to do her bidding. Final scene, ayun, love struck si Hajime. Hindi niya malaman tuloy kung sino susundin niya, si Saki o si Metropoliman. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace! Umpisa pa na ng episode hanggang sa um, Yeah, from start to finish Tense ang pacing Nagkaroon na ng satisfactory ane, Nagkaroon na ng feeling of satisfaction ako as the viewer When Revel was promoted to first rank At nabigyan niya ng pakpakagad si Saki And of course the final scene Do I have complaints with the pacing? Nope <laughs> talagang justified yung overall pace ng episode kasi pinakita sa atin ang dalawang sides ng 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 coin na to the desperate side and the uh, uh, the side of satisfaction cause wow when uh, when Saki uh, shot Hajime with that red arrow it was quite a satisfying moment talagang uh, well Teka, does this mean that Hajime will be in love with Saki for the next 33 days? Creepy. <laughs> Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when... Um... Awa na gulat eh. When Mirai... Um... Uh, let's call this... Um... Uh, shoot... Uh... Hajime out of the way in order for him to get inside the mirror house and... Well... It's obvious. Nagbabaka sa kali siya matul- ma- para ma- ma- matulungan niya si Nana to. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because it was quite a shocker. It just, it just goes to show you how immature uh, Mirai can be. Second gear shift. 
was when well was when Ravel was promoted to to first rank okay si God mismo ang nag-ano sa kanya why did I call this a gearship no brainer mga lifestyle Ravel has accomplished his, his goal of becoming a first rank but in an accidental way yun nga lang kasi um talagang um he himself really felt down when he saw uh, his god candidate feeling down again and uh, he went on blame mode siya sabi nga niya I'm such a useless angel to you Saki I'm, I'm so sorry talagang ayun bumuhos na ang luha literally mula sa mata niya and well for sure God saw this kaya he went down from heaven and Uh, promoted Revel to first rank he is now known as the angel of emotion character development gear shift po ito kaya gear shift talaga siya and the final gear shift was of course well these gear shifts are they stand they stand side by side Saki receives her wings you can call me a normie if I don't call if I don't um, if I don't call this particular sequence a gear shift eh a major character si ano eh si Saki if it weren't for this gear shift we wouldn't have such a satisfying final scene so these three gear shifts that I saw the last two will play a role down the line in this anime and malapit na tayo sa well malapit na tayo sa first half ng run ng anime na to so it's It just got pretty interesting. <laughs> Plot wise, malinis. Kasi kung dalagyan yung ito ng side story or back story, masisira eh. Masisira yung plot ng episode. Ang ganda ng plot eh. Mirai and Nanato found themselves in a really desperate situation where the chances of them surviving are are close to zero na. Then, um, all of a sudden, Revel gets promoted to first rank. Dahil, um, iniiyakan niya talaga yung kalagayan ni Saki ngayon. Hindi rin niya matulungan dahil second rank lang siya at that point. But, what does God do? <clears throat> It promotes siya to first rank. So, so, he was now able to give Saki her wings. And he's now, and he's no longer known as the angel of trickery. He's now known as the angel of emotion. So, well, he got that title by accident. Technically, <laughs> if the plot weren't this clean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't deep dive this much into uh, into the episode itself. Es- especially that scene where uh, Reva gets promoted to first rank and Saki gets her wings. So, grabe si God. <laughs> grabe naman si Lord. Kung kailang umiiyak na yung anghel, doon pa lang na pinromote. <laughs> But anyway, who am I to judge? That's God. Okay? In, in, uh, in, in real life, who are we to judge Him? So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Platinum End Episode 10. was a really satisfying uh, moment yung ano eh, yung uh, final scene and of course yung the scene where Revo gets promoted and Saki gets her wings so uh, talagang uh, I felt light despite the tense pacing so sabi ko yan tangin na ka guman nakaganti rin sa'yo mga bida <laughs> So, is there a chance now to uh, for the good guys to one up at Polyman? They just raised their chances to 75%. <laughs> to tell you honestly, mga ka lifestyle Patreon. Kaya 
nananabik na ako sa susunod na episode. I really wanna know how uh, how Mirai's gonna take this. <laughs> Magse, uh, magpap, magpapairal ba na selos dito si Mirai? Uh, who knows? Okay? Who knows? So again, Platinum End Episode 10 deserves another, deserves another mic drop. just have to do the drill now mga ka lifestyle patreon we will wait for next week and watch the next episode can't wait patreon wait for my next upload so for everyone who is still on the ARD chill lang kayo dyan. enjoy the other reviews in this digest wow no uh, I wanna <laughs> Um, first, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to make things clear with you, mga lifestyle Patreon. Hindi pala split core ang Yasha Hime. So, yeah, it's all, tw- it's, yeah, it's a 24 episode long odyssey. So, run down na natin. Moroha was able to purify the full moon Rahon Dog Demon and found a way to counter uh, Shogun's World Reversal. Setsuna, um, well, her uh, her comrades followed her instructions to the letter, and well, they were able to defeat the snow demon. So mission accomplished for the demon slayers. But unfortunately, Toa, um, Toa's, uh, Toa is not doing well with her story, naman. Nilagyan siya ng parang ano eh, ng parang cursed bug ni Nanahoshi. That. The more she um the more she feels sad, the more she feels desperate. Lumalakas ito at unti-unting nilalamon yung kaluluwa niya. Her essence as a demon. Final scene. Her demon powers have come back kasi tapos na ang new moon eh. So sabay silang naging half demon uli ni ni Setsuna. Things are looking too good for Toa. Unti-unti na siyang nilalamon ng kanyang sariling kalungkutan. So, feeding this cursed bug even more. Not good. It's not looking good at all talaga. So, let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Napakabilis na rundown na yun, ha? Pace! Yung story nila Toa, ay Toa, nila Setsuna at Moroha, uh, medyo climax ni. So, the pace will absolutely pick up. Talagang dama mo eh, na they're almost there in, in finishing their stories eh. Pero, pag, 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 pag dating naman kay Toa, naging slow and excruciating. That backgrounder will actually make you, will make you, uh, will make the pacing more slow, will make the pacing slower and more excruciating for the viewer. Do I have complaints about uh, the pacing on this episode? <laughs> Silly you! Wala! <laughs> I love the pacing! Talaga masusundan mo on masusundan mo where uh, where the girls are at in their uh, in their respective stories. Flow naman! The biggest gear shift I saw here was the final scene. Kasi successful yung well, happy ending yung story ah, nila Setsuna at ni Moroha. They were able to accomplish their own respective their respective missions. Eh, si Toa naman, hirap na hirap ngayon. That's why, well, here's why I called, here's why I actually called it a gear shift. If this, um, if this scenario plays out, at talagang napatay ni Toa si, si Zero, na una yon before uh, Setsuna successfully cuts that string off. We're gonna have a um. We're gonna have a sad ending to the first half of of season two's run. Kaya nga gear shift ito eh. It'll make you think about the about the the potential implications of of uh of Toa completely sub 
uh, completely uh, getting devoured by this cursed bug. So, wow. Kung inuyasa fan ka, magdadasal ka na eh. Na, please eh, please to, huwag ka pumigay, huwag ka pumigay. Gagano, gagano ka na eh, please, please, please. Because of this gear shift. Sigurado ako. So, now if you're asking, now you're asking me if, if this gear shift will play a role in in, in the in the uh, what you call this in in the next episode definitely it will plot wise eh plotado talagang um if you would deep dive into all the episodes that um the three stories that these three stories covered hindi mo ma hindi mo masasabi talagang clean plot eh kasi tatlong magkakaibang mission sila. And, we, as the viewer, see, are seeing this through, um, through much, uh, we're, we're seeing all three of these in an organized way. So as not to, um, not to make us focus on, uh, not to make us judge on which story is more important. Kumbaga, um, the plot is so well ironed out, you cannot say which is the most important. Magaling ang sunrise. <laughs> all these, all these three stories, they are all, uh, they are all equally important. Kasi, um, each of the girls' character development Dumipende sa mga sa mga individual stories nila. So, we can say that um well, Towa hindi pa eh. Hindi pa. Her story is not yet over. So, Setsuna and Moroha have learned a lot from their from their respective uh, stories. Halatae. Eh. Lalo na na si Moroha. So, What can I say? What else can I say? It's a well ironed out plot, mga ka lifestyle. Patreon. Yeah. I'm totally at a loss for words when it comes to the plot right now. Beautifully done. Saludo ko sa inyo, Sunrise. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Yasahim in the second act, episode 11. Hmm. Deserve pa rin. Two thumbs up! You know, it really makes you wonder if you're if you're totally new to um, to Yashahime, siguro, nag, ang tanong na naglalaro sa mga sa mga utak nyo ngayon ay ito. Kung New Moon at ganito ang nangyayari sa Kambal, bakit hindi nangyayari kay, Se, kay, kay Boroha ito? Good question. Because she is a quarter demon. Well, we all know that uh, that Inuyasha is her father. Inuyasha is a half demon. Kaya, if you're going to take lessons on on how to handle the new moon, go back to Inuyasha. Kasi ganito rin ang effect kay ganito rin ang effect ng new moon kay Inuyasha. He becomes uh, a helpless human for one night at nagiging itim din ang buhok niya now Moro's mother si Kagome is a pure human kaya siya naging quarter demon you can now conclude that the new moon only affects half demons the twins are are, are, are the current examples. Kasi, Seshumaru is a pure demon. While their mother, Rin, is a pure human. Kaya, mm, half demon sila pareho. So, every time there's a new moon, they get affected. Eh, ngayon, um, nung season 1, si Towa lang eh, ang apektado. But right now, in uh, now that the now that the dream butterfly has been 
has been taken out of Setsuna's body, she too is affected by the new moon. Pero magkaiba yung reaction ng mga katawan nila to the new moon eh. Although, they lose their demon powers. Guaranteed yun. Si Toa kasi, nangingitim ang buhok kasi silver-haired siya eh. Nangingitim yung buhok niya tulad, tulad kay Inuyasha. Si Setsuna naman, hindi, well, talagang itim na ang buhok niya eh. Ang sa kanya, humahaba hanggang sahig yung buhok niya. <laughs> Let's just assume uh, for the next episode that a lot is going to happen. Okay? It'll be a um, a cliffhanger of an episode. Yun ang, uh, yun ang forecast ko rito. So again, Yasha Hime, the second act, episode 11. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for Yasha Hime, mga ka-lifestyle. Wow. Towa, wag ka bibigay na. Wag ka bibigay. So what do we do now? Of course, the thrill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. We're, we are about to cap off the first half of Season 2's run with that episode. So, it's gonna be an exciting one. Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for everybody who are, who, well, who are, still, uh, who are still stuck with the ARD, well, you know what to do. I, I don't in the meantime enjoy the other reviews in this digest wow so the battle between Kika and Sakura has just begun um I don't know if um if uh, if Kika was actually playing mind games with um uh, with Sakura pero habang dihado siya sa laban this is what she was actually doing uh, while they were battling of course Teruto um, uh, Hiyori and the uh, and the other guy are trying to get into the tower ngayon of all people si Ishinomi ba ang tumulong sa kanila and we, we just as never missing with just a snap of his finger, they're already inside. In the place where uh, where the battle was going on. Uh, when it comes to lives, lamang si Sakura. Pero yung field advantage na kay, ano, na kay, na kay Kika ngayon. So, while, but, while, when Kika is about to deliver the final, uh, the final blow, ayun, oh, kinusap, si, kinusap ni Sakura si, ano, kinusap ni Teruto si Sakura. And uh, he just said, "Hey, I don't give a shit of what what, what these people would say. Um, without you, I want to be all, I want to be on the path right now. So, thank you, Sakura. Nayon, sinabi ka agad ni Sakura na my wish has been my wish has finally been granted. Then at that moment, boom, Kika defeats Sakura." And the moment na uh, the final the final strike was um went through, bigla na na si Sakura. As in, she disintegrated. Final scene. Natural. Gustong gusto bwentahan ni ni Tero to kanyang kapatid for what she did. She challenges her to a battle. So, eh, well, Kika actually uh, tried to weasel her way out of the of the challenge. Sinabi naman ni Tero to. I don't give a shit if it's a if it's a if it's a rebuild or not. This is just between us. Whoa! So let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. Kasi the well, the battle scene was rather long. It took. It took about half the episode, conservatively. Um, I don't know, because talaga na nahabaan ako sa do sa battle scene. Eh. But if you, if I would look on the flip side of that, 
Kika was finding a way to um to win while she's playing mind games with Sakura. The slow but excruciating pacing uh, clearly made up for the um, for the battle scene that dragged on and on because of uh, because of the king's mind games. Okay. Well, isha kontra bide. She has every right to do that. <laughs> so, do I have any complaints when it comes to the pacing? A bit. Kung! Um... If live in films uh, made it more difficult for um... for... for Teroto and the others to, to get in, yung tipong hindi makikilang si Ishinome, this would have been a more exciting, a more exciting episode. But, uh, yeah, that, that's my only complaint. Kumbaga, ginrag on lang nila yung battle scene. Eh. They could have made it a true seesaw battle, yung tipong talagang ubusan sila ng lives. Okay? Palakasan ng monster na nilalabas, and, well, talagang batuhan ng taktika ang dapat ipakita. So naman, well, um, first gear shift here was when Ishinome, well, stuck his nose in again, but this time, to help um, Team Teroto get into the tower. So, ganun nga lang eh. Why did I call this a gear shift? What? It just goes to show you how much of a double dealer Ishinomi is. Yeah, sinasabi ko sa inyo in, in previous episodes eh. Teroton needs to deal with this guy permanently before taking on the king. Pero, that's not going to happen ah. The challenge has been made to Kika, so the siblings will be, will, uh, will go at it for the final two episodes. At least. Sigurado, sigurado matagal, na, matagal na battle to. Talagang magbabakbakan yung dalawang yan. Now, going back to Ishinome. Ano ba talaga ang... Ano ba talaga ang mindset ng mokong na to? Yeah, it really makes you think. Kaya nga dinagawa kong gear shift to eh. Talagang... Every time Ishinome makes a move, you will question it eh. Kaya question it mo talaga eh. Ano ba to? Uh, kami ba kay Latero to to? Or... Uh, Alipores pa rin ba ni Kika ito? You don't know eh. He's... Um... He's serving both sides of the war. That's dangerous. That's dangerous ground he's treading. So... <laughs> that's why I called it the gear ship. Talagang, it made me think. Final gear ship. Dalawa lang yun. Was when... Kika... Beat Sakura. Look. Bakit gear shift? Eh. Obvious ba? It, um, it served as the floodgate for, for, um, for the pour of emotions that, um, that, uh, that came in soon after. Siyempre, umiyak si Hiyori. Then, um, sino nga ba itong ano? Uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the tall guy. Uh, he, had that, he had that sad look on his face. And of course, Teroto, on the look on his face, he is absolutely pissed off. So, this was actually, um, this can actually be the trigger for the finale. But, it is. Hello. Kaya, ano eh. Kaya, ko, kaya rin ko tinawag ng gear shit to kasi, this is how psychotic Kika has become. How, um, how power has corrupted her. Diba nga, may kasabihan? Power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. Best example is Kika. So, that was a tough to watch gear shift. That was a very tough, tough to watch gear shift. So, these two gear shifts that I saw, both of them will play a role in the final two episodes. Tagaan nyo sa bato yan. Plot-wise, may mga 
maliit ng recollection sequences pero split second lang malinis ang plot <laughs> if you're going to um if you're going to dwell on those recollection sequences those side stories those back stories mawawala ka sa main continuity of the episode unless um the side story or back story is is part of the main continuity it did not affect the overall plot of this episode kaya malinis ang plot hmm? kung nilagyan nila ito ng medyo medyo no, medyo mahabang recollection sequence sira yung battle scene ang hama na nga ng battle scene lalagyan mo pa ng lalagyan mo pa ng uh, lalagyan mo pa ng mahabang uh, uh, flashback sequence parang hindi na tama eh you're you're You'll, you'll only you'll only torture the viewer mentally <laughs> grabe so pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode setting us up for probably um two of the best final episodes of the of uh of this anime season Oh, we'll, but we'll, but we'll, we'll, we've yet to see that. Okay, we've yet to see that. So, build the fight, Code Black, episode ten. Okay, but just like I said before in the pacing, I had a little complaint about it. Come. Um, I'm not going to contend anymore about the length of the battle scene. Uh, all in all, but I am going to contend how um how the closing moments uh went down. Kung ginawa nilang tunay na siso battle ito yung talagang talagang nagubusan ng life sila nagubusan ng life sila Kika at Sakura. That would be a legit siso battle. Pero Um, pinatagal lang ni Kika because of her mind games and um, tapos siyempre uh, you have to pan the camera to to team Tera to on, on how they're on how they're going to get into the tower so kung ginanon lang nila kung ginawa nilang legitimate na na siso battle yung yung battle scene It would have been a more exciting episode, pero if you were if you're new to anime, you would find the the, the entire battle scene dragging. Ganon ka haba. Nakama nakatamarin ka ng panoorin ng episode nito. So what? Well, I hope they don't do that in the final two episodes. Kung baga, well, let's expect na mahabang battle sequence between Kika and Peroto. So, lagyan nila ng kwarteng siso. Kung maga, naka isa o dalawang life si Kika, kukuha din ng isa o dalawang life si Tero to. Or, uh, there's been a standstill, hindi nagkaubusan muna ng, ng puntos, uh, ng, ng lives, then all of a sudden, ayun, it's back to siso. It's back to siso mode. Sana ganun. So again, build divide code black. Episode uh, 10 Ito na makalimutan Pantamak lang talaga Sorry guys Well But I'm hoping the final two episodes will be better What are we gonna do? Of course the drill We wait for next week And watch the next episode I can't wait for I can't wait for the final two episodes Mukhang Nevertheless We'll be um, We will be up for a slam bang ending To season 1 So, uh, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And to those, uh, oh, to the fans of the ARD, chill lang tayo, no pressure. Enjoy the other reviews on this digest.